Hey, so what's going on, guys? Hey, it's uh, it's old Bruce here, Vintage Drum Restoration Garage here in Phoenix, and believe it or not, it's raining outside here. Check it out, man. So, what better thing to do in the rain than to work on a good old drum? So we're still working on this old lady, and. Uh, Hope to finish her up today. So here's where we're at on it. Let me get you adjusted here so you can check it out. And um, she's all put back together. Um, the last you saw of it, uh, we put this throw off on. And uh, it's working great. See it going up and down there working really nice and smooth got a nice snap to it and so what I thought we'd do here today is um, work on these tension rods and the hoops so what I'm going to do is show you what I'm doing on these tension rods these tension rods are pretty pretty manky <laughs> that's my wife's term for really nasty and dirty so look at them but we're going to clean them up and i'll show you how i do that what i do is uh you know the first thing i do is i i put them on a really flat surface and find out if they're if they're straight or not because uh i don't really want to bend up rod this one appears to be just slightly bent don't forget these are whoops oh i'm not showing you what i'm doing here <laughs> i'm a real pro here okay so I'm, I'm rolling it on this flat surface and um, it seems to be slightly maybe bent but what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to put the thing in my chuck here tighten it up a little bit always remember to take your chuck out you don't want it to slap you in the head so I'm going to turn it and you can see it's a little bit out what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean it up I've got some 220 paper and you can use emery paper too I folded it up about the width of the shank on this and I just kindly run it around here and I'm just like basically sanding the uh, rust off of this thing. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm not getting up into the thread part. I'm just kind of sanding it down. And turn it over and give it another little shot of it. So that's pretty good so I'll take it out of there I'll show you what we've got here so that cleaned it up quite a bit that got all the uh, deep rust off of it and I'll just bring it over here to the, the wheel and, and lightly clean it Get the rest of this rust off the the head here, and then I'll go over the shank here a little bit, kind of clean it up, kind of hold on to it real good. Then we're going to do the threads here. All right, so now. We're looking much better. Show you what we got here. So it's looking a lot better. But what we'll do is we'll take it over here to the buffing wheels and we'll finish buff it.
then I'll use this white rouge, which is a lot finer grit. Now you can see that. So I'll, uh, what I do to take off the rest of that, uh, the buffing funk as it were, is a little of this brake cleaner, brake parts cleaner on it. And it kind of cleans it all up, takes off all the uh, residue from the buffing. And I'll just uh, clean it up here one more time. And I'll show you what we've got here. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, so now we're not done with this. Because you know what we got to do next, right? I'm going to... Uh, Put a little oil on it, just a little bit, and I'm going to take my my drill with my cutoff drum key, and then I'm going to run it through this die. Start it off slowly, and I'm just cleaning all these threads real good. I do it a couple times give it a real good cleaning Looking pretty good and then I'm going to do the same thing with the swivel nut on the, the drum here I'm going to put a uh, 1024 cap in my drill here and I'm going to run it on down. You should probably put your drill on a slower... slower setting. And then, of course, I'm going to oil it one more time. And I'm going to put it back in the, uh, in the lug here. I'm going to run it on down. And that's what I'm going to do with every one of these rods. So I'll bring you back when I've got all those rods done, and then we'll start buffing that hoop. All right, cool. I got all those uh, those rods all cleaned up, and now I'm going to start working on this bottom hoop. As you can see, it's got all this uh, surface uh, corrosion. And I'm going to take that off with the uh, four-aught steel wool and my solution, and then I'm going to buff it. So I sprayed it down with my 50-50 uh, ammonia water solution. And I go over with this uh, 4 aught steel wool just to get that top grime off of there. I could use the wheel, but I'm afraid it might make it blush. So I don't want to do that. So I just go around it, clean it up in general. Then I'm going to give it a good buffing. So that's the uh, 
That's the outside. Here's the inside. Let's give it a quick cleaning. The hoop is straight, so that's uh, that's good. Just gonna wipe it down real quick. Should have this drum up and running uh, in a little bit of time here. It took about 10 minutes per rod cleaning them and uh, in straightening them, getting everything right, cleaning all the threads. So it just takes a lot of time with these old drums, but it's fun. I, I enjoy it. All right, I'll bring you over here to the buffer. See what's going on. doing this area right now. Keep going around it and I'll, I'll show you how it turns out. Alright, well I got that hoop all cleaned up. I did two buffings on it. You saw the one. You saw about a half of the one. And um, now in these areas where the drum sat on the, you know, on pavement and things, uh, it's scratched for good. You're not going to get the scratches out of them. Don't forget, back in these days uh, when this drum was made, what was would have been what 80 something years ago they the snare stands didn't have rubber 
on the um, you know on the baskets they didn't have rubber on it was just metal to metal and it would just scratch these hoops up really good so that said this is as good as you're going to get this hoop well as good as i'm going to get it so i'm going to take all these rods off and i'm going to install a relatively new head on this gun. And I'm going to show you what snare wires I've got for it. Got all these threads really nice and clean. They're really smooth. And I think that, that helps with tuning the drum. And I got them as straight as I could too. I'll show you a little bit later how I straighten these. You know how I do it. Uh, I, clean, I straighten these rods. I'm not saying I know how to do it better than anyone else. I'm just saying this is how I do it. Okay, so I've got this Renaissance head. It's just what I have right now. It feels just a hair thinner than a than a uh, ambassador, but I prefer ambassadors. But for now. I'm, this is the head I'm going to use. I just don't have a, a brand new one sitting around, but this one's pretty nice. So um, where the handle goes, that's where you would put the Broadway parallel engraving, which is right here. As you can see, Broadway parallel. I put that on the handle side. throw off side and get these uh, rods started nice to see this drum coming along been on the bench for weeks don't forget when I put a video out I don't always get to working on it right away this isn't just one one day of video videoing I have other things going on so okay I'm gonna get all this thing lined up right get it snug down just a little bit basic tune. I, I, I'm not really tuning the drum right now. I'm just um, kind of tensioning it up a little bit. And then when I finally do tune it, I tune it like this. And I, I just get it as even as I can.
sounds about as close as we're going to get it for now. So now, I made some snares for this, not for this drum, but another Leedy Broadway Parallel, which are, these are the old James snares that went on uh, Slingerland drums out of the, you know, 30s and 40s. And I believe these are longer, so... You know, these will not work on this drum. Because uh, these these uh, windows are not wide enough. So, and let me just show you what's going on here. These probably were on a, a Broadway with the other hoop, which is the window is wider. So I just made these ends here. And I took some brass sheeting. And I drilled a hole in the you know, in the, in the snare wires, and I fasten them with, with nuts and bolts. So I'll probably end up doing the same thing with this one. That way they tension on real good. I got to find some wires real quick. So let me uh, find those. Okay, I think I found what I'm looking for. Looking through all my snare wires and see, I'm looking for a set of snares that they go past the you know, past the head. Normal snare wires would end about here. And these go past. So the wires are on the head all the way across. These probably came off of a... Like a 15-inch drum. I only have two sets and they're really rare snares. They're called snappy snares. If you look closely, it'll say it right there. Snappy. And so I'm going to see that snappy snares. Probably came out of drums from the, no, oh, there it is, snappy. <coughs> and I believe it's uh, two, four, six, eight, there are 12 strands which is cool. That's about what I want for this drum. Now you could just make a set of snare wires, you know, say you've got a regular set of snare wires and you don't want them to go all the way across. Well, uh, you could take a regular set and do what I'm doing. And you, you could put a reg regular set on here and put bands on here and connect them to the adjusters. But, but that's not really what I'm going for here. So I've got this this metal here. It's brass. I don't know the thickness. Uh, you know, I just picked it up somewhere. And I'm going to cut bands on it. Here's some, here's some thinner stuff. And I'll cut some bands on it and I'll make some ends to go across here. I found this, I think this is spring steel, and I'll, I'll cut these off, and these will be my pieces, I'll cut those off so, so big, these will be my end pieces, so I'll cut them off and file them the way I want, I'll make two of them, and then uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've got my two end plates, I've cut them and uh, made them to where they fit on the ends like this they just go right in there just go right in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them stack them up then I'm going to drill holes in them on the old uh, for here in the, in the vise here drilled my holes drilled my holes in the ends of these little plates and I've cut off my desired width of my brass here to go through the snare and but I want to be able to find out my distance so I have to screw these adjusters all the way in and before I do that let me just give you a bird's eye view here these uh, 
these ends aren't exactly straight so I'll just take a little crescent wrench and straighten them around this one's really bent here so I'm going to take it and bend it a little bit and then I'm going to bring it in a little bit too just to straighten it up a little bit that looks better So now I'm going to get my uh, measurement on there and I'm going to cut it. Okay, so now I cut these little bands off here. As you can see I cut my thumb too. you got to do, your, do a little bit of cutting on yourself while you're doing this or it just wouldn't be right. So now I've got to... Um, I found these really nice, a real short rivet, pop rivet. And I'm going to use those so I got to find out where I want my hole. And it's just it's about right in this area. So I'm going to make my hole and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, I got the uh, one side on there. If I showed you how I was doing this, it'd be like watching someone make sausage. So <laughs> I didn't really want to... Uh, film all that because I have to keep going back and forth. It's kind of a grueling process drilling through this uh, thin brass and everything, but um, I'm just showing the basic process. So I've drilled through the brass and I've got my end in there with my pop rivet sticking in there. So the other side I put a little washer just to keep it so when it dimples over it has something to uh, push up against. So let me get my pop rivet gun or pop riveter and I just hold this really tight here and squeeze and start the process here. Then you let off and you keep mushrooming it over. Mushrooming it over. And now it's pretty much mushroomed so that's about the third go at it, and it's going to break off here real soon here. Hard to do here on camera. Okay, so I've got that in there. I want to, uh, I want to come over here to the uh, vise and show you what I want to do here. I just want to kindly mushroom this part over. So I'll take my little hammer, very small ball peen, and I'll just hammer it over. That way I've got it all nice and fastened down real good. Now we're ready to install them on the drum we've got that all, all on there both sides so i'm going to slip those in there slip these through the other side and i've got this side on and i've got i've got this side on And that's how I do it. <coughs> Sorry about that. I didn't have you on the... So I've got those in there. Now I'm in. Okay, look at I got the uh, both sides in there. And I um, just want to show you how the snares go up and down. And um, a closer view would be... If you watch the center of the, the snares where they're coming up, You'll see that they're coming down in the middle first, and that's good. See how they're just just hugging the head in the middle, and then they come down and complete their path down. And they're coming down straight, and all the wires are on the drum, so this is going well. And I've adjusted the sides here 
to where when they they both come down together so quite nicely and you can get your height your tightness uh, on each of these knobs all right so that's where we're at which brings us now to the uh, tone control don't forget this drum had a a Slingerland Radio King tone control in it which uh, actually made the holes a little bit uh, well they reamed them out a little bit so they're a little bit big but we can't have that we got to have the right tone control can't we so did you know that there's two different leady tone controls yes class this is true one is for the the toms and one is for the snare drum they only make one for a snare drum so don't let anyone tell you that uh all tone controls fit yeah this is the leady tone control but you see how long the arms are here that's for a, for a tom floor tom or a tom tom and i've seen these on ebay and they try to pawn them off as they fit a snare drum well they won't fit a snare drum you would actually have to drill the holes down lower in your drum to get this to seat right it's the wrong tone control it's a hard tone control to find in any uh configuration but this is the one you want for the tom for the snare drum so this is one's going to go on there i brought this one out here because i need this nickel knob off of it this one's got a chrome knob so we got to have uh, it um you know it's got to have the right uh plating on it so i'm going to take this apart right now and i'll come right back Notice how this uh, this rod is taking a, like an S shape. I'm going to straighten that out in the vise right now. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. There we go. We got our beautiful tone control on there. Um, now we're ready to uh, install a head. I've got a uh, ambassador. I used one. Decent looking. Um, is it new? No, I, but I don't care. I'm not really uh, that bothered by it. So, matter of fact, I kind of like used heads to play on. So, uh, as long as they're not too beat. So, this is great. I'm going to uh, get started on that uh, hoop or or the the rods one of the two but uh, at, at present I'm going in for dinner and I'll catch you guys in the morning well good morning to you it's uh it's another rainy day here in the land of the sun but uh, we need the uh, rain too so that's okay let me show you where we are with this drum I've taken the liberty of uh, starting without you class but uh, we've got this top hoop all cleaned up looks really nice I'll show you a little preview of it anyway that's all nice and cleaned up so I'm gonna work on these rods and uh, I promise you folks we're gonna have this drum done today all right be right back hey friends uh, as far as these rods when they're bent um, invariably they're bent right at the end of the threads like right in this area so you can just about turn them and look at them and you'll see the bend and I can see the bend right here see how this is going up a little bit maybe you can't so what do I do is I, I put them in the vise with the wooden jaws in here just up to where the threads end then i take a look see at them i take a look and i pretty much just maybe put the key in there and turn it to where i can tell exactly where this is and i tighten it up a little more and i just take one of these little rawhide mallets and I just just tap it and you'll see it go right back in 
Remember, these are them thin rods, so they can't take as much abuse. And they're really long, too, so that looks pretty straight. I think I can see just a little bit more bend on it in this area. So I'll just put it in there, and I can look at it and pretty much tell right where the bend is. So now you can pretty much look at it and see that it's turning really straight. So that's what I do on that. Here's a little recap on and a really great way to straighten these rods. So I've I've got the rod right at the end of the threads. The threads end right about here. And I've got them in the wooden jaws. I don't do this in the metal jaws. So I've got the key on the rod and I'm going to turn it. Now watch it watch it to, uh It'll show right where the bend is. See how it's going down now? It's going back up. It's going back down. So I know that's where the bend is. So I would have to have you facing down, but I'm not. I'm just going to I'm just going to watch it over on I'm watching it this side. So I found the spot where I need to tap it. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit in the vise. And I'm going to tap it again. Now, I'll turn it again. And look at it. It's really straight now. So that's a really good way to get these things really true. How often do you see a cat out in the rain? That's my cat. And he is, uh, he loves it outdoors. Look at him just cleaning and it's raining outside. <laughs> Hi, Lucky. <laughs> Crazy cat. All right, we're coming to a close on this uh, restoration here. I've got all the rods cleaned and inserted in the hoop. And I'm going to install it on the shell here. And, uh, kind of an exciting time. Just start all these threads first. And then it's kind of important to uh, get these these rods going straight up and down on these on these uh, tall drums. It's um, you got to take some time and get these uh, rods going straight up and down. Let's see how this back one is doing here. Pretty much got that head seated pretty good. Now we're just going to <clears throat> get this head uh, tuned up a little bit. I just go by sound.
and these drums um, tend to uh, like to tune up on the lower side especially the bottom heads so that's how it looks I'm going to let it set for a day or so and then I'll give it a final tuning and uh, maybe we'll uh, take it for a test drive Okay guys, that's going to do it for uh, this uh, Leedy Broadway Parallel snare drum redo or reconstruction, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's been a pleasure bringing this to you and uh, I've enjoyed every moment of it. <laughs> so uh, I had to change that top head on the, that drum. Uh, I put a... a a wider collar uh, aquarium top head on it because on these leady hoops they tend to be a little bigger for the flesh hoops on a uh, calfskin head and they tend to slop off the edges and they were slopping off and it was a terrible tone so I had to change that and once I got that dialed in it was pretty nice I mean it's it's gonna take some time to get it exactly where I want it but I thought I'd give you a little demo and uh, Hope you enjoyed that and uh, stay tuned for the next one on uh, Vintage Drum Restoration Garage. Hope to see you then. Take care.